Unsight. Okay. Nice. Well, I don't see it and I hate it. Thanks. Uh, okay. This is kind of cute. Author had no LDC entries before, or trophies before CLDC. Okay, I buy it. This entry, yeah. I mean, sometimes people make things before. Uh, like, make levels before L entering LDCs, but some people like, you know, just going for it. Don't really blame them. Do I want to go in the pipe? I guess I do. I noticed I can't spin jump all of the sudden. Yeah, there was no way I was going to get out of there. This hack, it's something. Thump. Like, basically I have to use my knowledge of how things... Oh, you bastard. How things move. And use that to make sure I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, I have to go between that and the spike. That boo is going to be a problem. I guarantee. Bump. I think we're fine. Bump. Probably a little bit early. This is fine. Intriguing. Wonder what I could do with that. Oh. Jump the gun. I don't like where I've placed either of you. That is not an SMW boo. It's an SMB3 boo. Some curse shit, yeah. I mean, I think this is cute. This is a not ultimately terribly, utterly difficult thing to pull off. But it still is effective. Though I wish they'd rely less upon this one gimmick of <laughs> failing me every time I end up... Uh, yeah, the, the invisible blocks is kind of annoying, but definitely in the theme of everything. Um, you know, I'm going to keep going forward instead. Oh, there's lava there. Mario does not want to deal with this shit. Let Daisy handle it. Alright, we'll give Daisy some free time. Some screen time. Like I said, there's a couple I need to get in and uh, go and update, or not update, uh, throw into the pile. There's a credible Knuckles sprite now, which I definitely want. Um, there's Madeline and Battleline. There's also the sprite from... Uh, the sprite from Secret of Mana. Someone made that one up this C3. Which I'm definitely in favor of adding. It's just a matter of extracting the, uh, the colors. I'm already using Graphics 32s. It makes things kind of easy. But the colors always throw me some trouble. sure. Oh, I didn't see that one. Popoy, yes. I didn't know the name off the top of my head. But there's just some work to be done there. I want to write a script that properly extracts it from, like, the common graphics palette. So that next time I don't have this problem. One of the reasons I really like it when people use uh, MM102s sprite uh, creator kit is it makes this sort of thing really easy because I can just extract it from the ASM as opposed to from the shared palette. Prim Supremacy. Yeah, well, if someone implements her, I'll, I'm happy to have her sprite too. But it's just a matter of what I can get my hands on. In fact, I've been meaning to, like, spend the time and make, uh, go and fix up the uh, 32 by 32 to uh, 32 by 16 
Verizer to do the right things. Because I got that product that started and then I completely ignored it for like the last two years. And I already have like the code rewritten to work for NES, so all I have to do is expand it along one more axis. It's a fairly straightforward uh, project by, by my standards. There we go. Gotta check it was an Angela Sprite. Oh, okay, I understand where I'm at now. Okay, thump. I didn't have the timing for that. Like at all. Been disappointed, yeah. It's a hard medium to work in for some people. There are severe constraints. Like I said, MM102's tool does make things a lot easier because you're basically dealing with one sprite sheet instead of an awful lot of them. And the weird discombobulations that occur. Right. I waited too short. Any good at art, you try the cool stuff. People won't. Yeah. I wish I had any skill with art. I don't. None at all. It would be cool. But I don't. I stick with what I knows. That knows me programming. I need to stop trying to do that. Rock it first and then jump after. Doo -doo -doo -doo. But yeah, simple but effective. Like, this is the kind of thing I'd expect to see in, like, a somewhat degenerate, uh, collab hack. Not a complete degenerate collab hack, but a somewhat degenerate collab hack. I'm not really sure I've picked a good choice to go right. No skill with programming, but you, either you can do it to a degree. I mean, it's good. Being able to glue things together to get, like, simple things done is definitely worth it. Like, not all programming is understanding complicated algorithms and data structures. Sometimes it's just attaching a database to a front end and making it easy for you to put data in it. Or... Access is kind of cool, I swear. How you made your Paradox Axe? Don't know what Paradox is. Yeah, I thought hacking doesn't actually involve knowing programming at all. You don't need to know any programming to make a pretty decent Mario hack. Hell, you don't even have to use, like, ASM to make a decent Mario hack. Just level design. Company Paradox Interactive. I know that company. I don't know what they make. Oh, Stellaris Hearts of Iron. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I am familiar with some of those, or at least familiar enough to know what they are. You know, I haven't looked at who made this yet. It's on the screen. Miracle Water. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, it occurs to me we went from Jeep Reese to Miracle Water. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really amusing, honestly. I guess we did have a detour in the middle. But... Still, not convinced it's worth it to go to the right. Take a look at Kloshwiz uh, scripting language. I am never heard of that one before. Does it have some interesting programming paradigm, or is it just used for those specific games? Okay, I 
hear the thump. I chose something much easier than I could have otherwise. Oh, you! Oh, God. Okay. Oh, no. Rock in a hard place. Absolute rock in a hard place. Yeah, I want to say Jeepers and Medi a Miracle Water made a really good uh, level for the Legends of the Hidden Thwimple collab that Romhack Races did twenty twenty for Q uh, for QLDC for um, GDQ. Probably SGDQ because they usually prefer Mario Maker for ADDQ. It was a really cool one. Uh, with a simple concept that worked really well. Basically, every time you landed, a bunch of sprites would uh, would fly up, as if you were shaking the ground. Guys are really good at simple concepts and taking them to massive ends. I still can never tell the difference between splash in and splash out with those things. I'm trying to think of. If I should try to go down, if it's worthwhile, I was thinking I was having more trouble going through the water section, honestly. The half mandatory water section. It's amazing I got through this like part two or three times without having to go and deal with that specific problem of the invisible stuff. I guess the upside of that is if I go down the pipe, I don't have to deal with that one potabo. And I get an extra... Feels like the bastard child of a bunch of programming languages. I mean, pretty much every scripting language has that property. People generally pick up the features they really want and make them into some horrible amalgam. Like, most people don't start a programming language using strong, philosophically held views or something. They just make a language and hope. Except for, like, the ML guys, but ML people are weird. Okay. play this. I wait for the thump. I wait for the thump. And then I go through the pipe. Cool. Post the snippet in Discord. Alright. Left restore spin jump. Right checkpoint. I'm probably going to regret this. side of restoring I mean so far the argument for restoring oh there it is there's the argument for restoring spin jump that's okay fascinating fascinating that I had to make that choice I'm also not very good at estimating when those things are going to fall. I do appreciate that the piranha plants themselves don't go invisible, even if their bullets do. You know, I probably should have, uh, should have waited there. 
Uh. Also, in retrospect, can't really go and just wait there. Alright. I like this level, though. I do appreciate the, the evil choice there. Restore spin jump or have a midway. I wonder if I would have kept the spin jump regardless? That makes sense. Like I would have kept it even having- nah, it probably wouldn't have given me the spin jump back on the next lap. Well, this could have gone better. Things are fine. So far. A tiny sparky. Oh, close. Alright, I feel optimistic about that. That wasn't too bad. I've changed my mind. It was too bad. Uh, I don't know why I'm trying to do that differently. Go back to the old system. Go back to the old ways. That one works without thinking. I realized far too late that I was on the wrong side of that one. side of many things. Okay, what features would I put in a programming language if I wanted to make my own programming language? First class functions would be an absolute must. I love my lambdas far too much to, uh, to not have that. I'll be honest, if I was going to make a language, I'd probably just end up making a Lisp derivative. It'd be simple enough. I've had plans to make something like that for a while, but haven't really gotten around to it. Probably should. There's a specific thing I want to do that's pretty silly, and the timing window for it is, in fact, closing. But... How it is, have the gigantic list of projects. You can only do so many in such amount of time. I'm not hosed. I'm not hosed. Wow, that was complete BS. I should not have gotten that. Okay, this is the part where I'm going to hit that, but whatever. Discord said no, so you made a pacement. Fair. That's it? I don't know why, but I expected more. Yeah, that was a pretty badass level. Simple concept, ex executed very well. Save. And of course, no credits because it doesn't need him. Uh, oh, thank you for the GGs. Um, I'm thinking. Not complicated code, of course, but it gets the general idea across. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Oh, that was a cool level. <laughs>